I have no nothing saved. If I quit my job and if I just put all my focus on my job into YouTube, I might be able to make my rent. I think I made $950. <laughs> and so it was just <laughs> enough to make my rent. And then from that point on, I've just been living off of YouTube. And that scarcity mindset has never left. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of the Reactiverse podcast brought to you by Passion Fruit. I'm excited for us to jump into our interview today with our first guest, Greg Alba of The Real Rejects. The Real Rejects have been in the YouTube space for about a decade now, just hitting 1 million subscribers this past year and helping pave the way for an entire generation of reactors. What you'll see in these subsequent episodes is that these talks go on usually about an hour long. However, for this very first episode, I've decided to let it run limitless, so to speak. We go on for almost two hours long for this very first episode, but again, I really wanted to hear his story. Story. It's such a fascinating journey of how he got here, and I'm so grateful that he was able to share his wisdom with us. So please enjoy the interview, like and subscribe to the channel, visit the Passion Fruit website if you haven't already, subscribe to the newsletter. We really appreciate all of that from you. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first flagship episode of the Reactorverse podcast. Uh, as I said before, this is a podcast that's going to focus on the ins and outs of the creator space, the reactor space, specifically for now. And uh, we have a long list of guests that we're going to get to, but the first one I wanted to make sure that we got kind of on our first, you know, debut episode was this man, uh, my good friend, Greg Alba, a veteran in the reactor space uh, and creator space in general. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Eric, for having me. How are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing well. This is so serious. Uh, it's really great. This is have. how we talk. <laughs> we yeah, talk in we this, talk. Yeah. this tone all the time. Hello, yeah. Greg. Nice to speak with you. <laughs> Hello, Greg. Every time. Nice to speak with you. I'm going to throw you off your game today, Eric. That's I, fine. I that's want okay. you to have that's, a that's, really that's uncomfortable first time doing this today. Don't worry. That, that's that's what we need. That's what we need. Uh, but yeah, like I want, like I said, I wanted to get into the ins and outs of you yourself, the channel, the real rejects, uh, kind of how this all sort of started and like how it's gone over the last you know decade now uh, that you've been doing it. Uh, I was so born at Kaiser Permanente. <laughs> Van Nuys Hospital, I believe. Oh, yeah. And from that moment <laughs> on, I knew what I wanted to be, a reactor. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask, like, uh, so the, the thing is, I always start with, you know, for the for the channel itself, I, I always start with, you know, the name, which was, you know, The Real Rejects. Uh, how did you come up with that name specifically as, like, the brand that you want to kind of run with? Uh, was it a hard process to figure out? Was it something you kind of just, like, thought of really quickly, just jumped into? I... Uh, at, at the time when the channel, when the idea of doing a YouTube channel was first, I was first approaching John to see if maybe we could, John Humphrey, my, my main co-host, to see if we were like, hey, should we start up a channel together? Should we, should we do one? And at first I wanted to do stoner re rejects, <laughs> stoner reviews. <laughs> and uh, he was living at home with his family at the time and he didn't like that idea. And so <laughs> I was like, fine. Um, and, and, but we were both I had a, a weird obsession with Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects. And oh. at the time, I was not hyper aware that everyone in LA comes up with something that replaces the word R E A L with the word R E E L. So I came up with real rejects and then come to discover there's a lot of people who like to do a little spin on the word real to mean authentic. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't exactly as original as I, as I hoped, but yeah, no, it was, yeah. that was the idea. And I, and I liked the, I liked the idea that we could, could I think it always be a default too. If you know, we're stupid or something like that, we could always just right. go, well, we're the rejects. Hey, we're stupid or something like that. <laughs> uh was uh i mean that's funny because that was like almost a similar experience to what i had with just the name nerd chronic it was like you know i thought of something that was like nerd something something and then uh we picked the name chronic with a friend of mine for our old podcast and uh it was the same thing it was kind of like 
No, it's it's it sounds associated with you know weed, but it's it's not. It's just, it's just a word <laughs> yeah. chronic, like the idea of like chronic in like the larger aspect. Mine was very much associated uh, with weed. I wanted it. I wanted to just be high all the time and have an excuse <laughs> to be high all the time. And now I barely ever smoke weed. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, but when you started though, for the first several years of the channel, um, you know we don't have to get too far into it because it's a bygone era. But you were going by the pseudonym Ryan Wright. Yes, sir. Um, was there a reason like for that specifically why you chose to go by like a, a, a fake name as opposed to your real name? Start off as something like pretentious bullshit. Um, well, what it was was that I I had heard. Um, I was like, oh, you know, I want to I want to transition out of. Um, you know, I I didn't know what YouTube really was. Like plain mm -hmm. and simple, I didn't understand the real concept of it. Like I was a fan of Ebert and Roper when growing up watching movie reviews, so I just wanted to have like a movie review channel. Um, but that, but then I was like, but I, I eventually want to transition to like doing other stuff, and then. I was like, yeah, you know, I should probably come up with like a different name. Um, so, so that way I could transition out of it. And then I came up with Ryan Wright. I was obsessed with Ryan Gosling. So uh, I came up with <laughs> Ryan Wright. And and then uh, John did Jerry. So we were doing the show. Um, we were doing a movie review show. We called it Reasons to See. And it was like our different kind of platform. But that that did not do well. Like it, it did not do well at all. <laughs> and like it got no views <laughs> and no attraction and we got no subs. And we were doing that for a while, and then, but John was focused on, on uh, he, he was in college, so I was like, I just got to take this channel in my own hands. Then, so that show essentially slowly just went; it was nothing. <laughs> it was just like didn't do anything. And and then I started doing my own solo videos. Then, and I used that opportunity as Ryan Wright to kind of get away with, like, doing a lot more provocative humor because I, I felt like I could hide behind a name. Yeah. And so, like, I was obsessed with. Um, like Louis C.K. humor and 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 old school Eminem, where you would just kind of say whatever you wanted just to kind of provoke people, and there was no one really like that in movie talk space. And then I was also kind of obsessed with like the Judd Apatow humor at the time, so I liked the idea of doing like a, a self-deprecating, like perverted kind of humor where it was like raunchy and and like you. you but the the idea is that like if I make a sex joke or something like that, like I'm the idiot, you know. And so it became a really old, like an outlet for me to let stuff out. Like I grew up, I grew up very uh, Catholic, and I was just coming out of a, a thing where I was doing business, where it was very much about how you presented yourself all the time. And so mm -hmm. I this that was kind of like my way of rebelling against all the things that I grew up with and using like my actual like real edgy sense of humor. The thing with being Ryan Wright though is that. You know, I, I was doing like three to five videos a day at the time, and uh, you yeah. know, I'd bring female guests on, and a big, and a lot of them knew, like off camera, they could tell, like off camera, I wasn't like an actual like creep. Um, but the so a big part of it was just to like provoke at, all the time, and, and so I generated like a big male audience who loved the sex jokes. I, I think I've made every dick joke I can make. Like I, I, I think I'm like dick joked out at this point. <laughs> so it, re it reached a certain point where I was like, yeah, you know, it it became an ex it was it it was really like an outlet to let out a different side of me that I had kind of um, contained for a very long time because I was always so concerned about presentation and image. So I used a a, a name to hide behind that. Uh, but then after a while, I did realize that like it it did limit me on my authentic self and mm -hmm. even in my personal life it limited me because wherever i went people only saw ryan Wright, and i didn't i couldn't really even have like a real conversation like i'm having with you right now because right. I, I felt the need to like my, the, my way of channeling i, I heard you, you watch ryan ryan funny enough ryan george pitch meeting i'm sure, sure you've seen some of ryan yeah. george yes. he says like when yeah. he gets any character he, he has to like this big smile and everything like that and for me, like yeah. to get into the Ryan Wright personality, I'd always go into like my low register pervy voice. I'd go like, uh, uh, what, "What would I say?" I'd go like, "Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Wright." <laughs> so I was, I was always like, "This like I'm a I'm a bro," <laughs> and uh, that that was uh, that was it was fun. It was it was really fun, but uh, yeah, no, it, it definitely limited me on what I could do, and, and it was uncomfortable like going places and being like, "I'm not really just like some pervert kind of guy." Like that's just for. <laughs> It's for the camera to make to, to say joke like every every video I would do for my solo reviews for like solo movie reviews, um, 
it was always about performing fellatio on some male actor or something like that. <laughs> you know? So I just ran out of I just ran out of material after a while when you're doing so many videos a day with no real audience to like you yeah. you, you can't hear people laughing or whatever. Um, right. So yeah, no, I I wasn't. It, it, that was a big part of the. I still got to learn a way to just summarize it in like sixty seconds. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> No, that's good. No, it's good to know just the just the whole trajectory of that. Um, but when you started, though, as Ryan Wright doing the first, you know, for user real rejects, did you have like a certain game plan of what you wanted to do with the channel? Or was it kind of just like more experimentation? I, wa- I wanted to do movie reviews so I could transition to screenwriting. And I just wanted to part time. I, di- I didn't realize you could actually make money uh, doing YouTube. Right. Um, and so my 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 short version is that I was. I was a receptionist at a doctor's office. I was working about 40 hours a week there. And then I was doing 30 hours a week uh, doing YouTube. And I was doing this for a long time, um, like, a, like a year, a year and a half. And I, the, like I said, like the reviews just weren't going anywhere. And then John was limited availability. Uh, so I was like, I just got to learn how to edit. I got to learn how to film. I got to learn how to do all this. And then I, I started doing solo reviews and those started doing better. And then uh, when I discovered reactions, it was off of an idea that this is silly. Like this is this is kind of this is kind of I thought it was kind of dumb to me, <laughs> like w- what it what it was. And I, I can't remember what my very first one was that I did. Um, because at first I I kind of laughed at it in the way how a lot of people laugh at it when they first see it. And, you know, I, I was yeah. one of those. If we're gonna compare it to it's- the Bible, I was like Saul uh, became a believer. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 i think it was like maleficent or something like that and uh, it was maleficent i think it might have been robocop robocop uh, or maleficent research. okay one of those two yeah it was early uh, early to mid november uh that you did both those two uh in doing my research on on your existing works. okay i don't remember the robocop one <laughs> remember the maleficent <laughs> one because i made a malefa i don't want to say the word right now i don't know how edgy be on this podcast but the c word and and right. and uh and, and then uh, I, I thought it was, and then it got like views. And even though I was just kind of mocking what it was, I was like, oh, I got to kind of, I wanted to kind of find like, what's well, a genuine way of doing this, you know? Because right. at the time there wasn't like a lot of people doing it. Now there's like so many people doing it, but at the time <laughs> yeah. there wasn't a lot of people doing it. And the the most common thing I would notice, and it sounds so like basic, but at the time it, it really wasn't basic. A lot of people weren't doing this because we were. Uh, I wanted real rejects to be like mainly movie reviews. Was mm-hmm. like, oh, why, why don't I just? I would I would do trailer reviews, but those got no views. So I was like, why don't I just turn, combine it where I can combine the comedy that I had at the time, the very specific kind of comedy I had at the time, with doing like a trailer reaction and doing a trailer like a full like actually having a a, a, a port because that was like a big criticism of, of reactions at the time was people would right. just kind of you know do do the reaction and then call it a day they would just say subscribe right afterwards and right. to me i'm like oh we can make like a full video and that that was the engagement part that i thought was was the most fun was the commentary so then i use that as an opportunity to like oh you know i've always been a big fan of talk shows like conan o'brien's my hero so i would bring on guests all the time and, and I would like find people like whether it be Craigslist or whatever. I, I mainly Craigslist was a big way to like find, I didn't know how to get people or I didn't really know people, but then I made a lot of great friends. And, and so that's how I met a lot of people. And then I would just bring them on as guests. And that, and that part has never really left the channel because I've always liked kind of that talk show uh, back and forth yeah. vibe. And yeah. um, then it started to take off because as I remember in the first, the first year of doing it um, when I was doing that 40 plus 30 hours, I I didn't realize you had to enable something on your Google AdSense in order to make money. <laughs> so <laughs> I made I made no money, like none at all. And right. and then I enabled it and then I made 50 cents and I took a screenshot of that. And I have it on my old on my old Instagram somewhere and I took a screenshot of that and I was like it's working and I started doing <laughs> the math of like okay, I'm getting like 10 subscribers a day. If I'm getting 10 I would do this like on the road to like work i was like if i gain 10 subscribers a day then i can uh okay then i could what if i increase this to 20 subscribers a day then 30 subscribers a day and just like kind of doing the math and it wasn't until i think the the one that really started take off for me was actually when i did vampire academy because i and and i think it was because like i was very I, i was like real about it like i i come across like such a especially at that time I come across like such a dude, like such a bro. And 
and then I, I watched it and I really I was like I really like this shit <laughs> like I really I lo- and it's so it was so female centric and and I and I, I I was like just some bro who came across like I really I really like and I did and that's when the audience started to come in I started covering the raid and uh, there wasn't a lot of American audiences covering the raid at the time and I was really into martial arts and so yeah it was it was finding that that pocket that really was I just kind of followed the ebb and flow of it. And then I didn't realize like, oh, I could, as I had always heard the phrase, not always, but for a few years, I'd heard the phrase work full time on your job and part time on your fortune. And eventually your fortune will become your full time job. And once I realized I could make money on YouTube, I was like, oh, I got to find a way to, to do that, to, to make, convert right. this into my fortune. And um, I, I, I'll never forget, like it was, I, I had, I, I was really good at my job as a receptionist, but then I started to really get awful at it. Um, cause I, <laughs> I, I, was, I really hit a point, like I almost got fired a couple of times. Um, because like I was instrumental, I, I was always been a fan of like understanding how business works and how to grow a business. So I helped out with that in, in for a while, even though I was just a receptionist, but then the last couple months, like I got gotten in trouble quite a bit and I was like, I gotta, I gotta get out of here because I am like not attentive and I am messing up a lot and I'm getting, and I deserved it. I was like really awful. I was a terrible at my, I started becoming terrible at the job. And, um, and, and I was like, all right, I made my rent at the time was pretty cheap. It was only like the actual rent was only like 800 bucks or something like that at the time, 750, 800 bucks. And the, I, uh, yeah, the bygone era of, uh, early 2010s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like 2015, I want to say 2014, 2015. And I was living and, and I was uh I was living in Highland Park before Highland Park started uh sprucing up as of late. The the but my rent was seven fifty and, and I had no savings. I had nothing. And and, it, and the most I had ever made on YouTube with the limited time I had to work on it was like four hundred dollars. Um right. so I four hundred to four fifty. And I, I, I was like, okay, you know what? I have no nothing saved. However, if I quit my job and if I just put all my focus on my job into YouTube, I might be able to make my rent. And so I took the leap of faith and I really hustled. And then I made like, I think I made $950. <laughs> and so it was just <laughs> enough to make my rent. And then from that point on, I've just been living off of YouTube and that scarcity mindset has never left. And, and no matter how, if the channel does phenomenally well in one month or whatever, I've that that, that mindset of mine is like I'm, I'm always in, I'm always on survivor mode, like constantly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, so, so I, it was it was a bit of an ed- educated uh, leap though, like because you kind of did the math in your head of like what you were currently generating and what you thought you could mm-hmm. g- 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 increase by a larger output of the work that you can dedicate yourself to. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm at a different point with the channel where I'm trying to do less videos. Um, <laughs> cause there was a time where it was like, cause, cause the algorithm really changes. But back then it was, it was like five to six minute videos, sometimes 10, whatever. But I, I, I would never have mid rolls or anything like that. I would, but I would just kind of dish them out. Like I didn't put as much at, I always put the thought into mainly the, like the, like I would mainly just do jump cuts, but I wouldn't really do much else other than the, with the when it came to the editing. I put right. most of it into the like what we're doing on camera as the form of entertainment, and we weren't covering like shows or movies. You know, it was it was like trailers, viral videos, or something like that. It was mainly that was mainly the focus. And um, and and what was your original question again, Eric? Uh, <laughs> just trying to journey. Back. I didn't realize we're going this far back, so it's kind of fun. Like, oh my god, this has been a journey. I I, I never think about these times, so it's just kind of kind of professional. Uh, yeah, just the uh, the the leap of faith, as as you said. Uh, what was it like? Just kind of doing the math in your head to anticipate this can be a living for me uh, because it was the same thing I did when I left my uh, also my also full-time job to start working as an editor full-time uh, for the Schmodown and elsewhere. I was just like the idea of like, I need to have the confidence to make sure that this will work out. Yeah. Um, like, so when you left your job, your receptionist job, like did you have like a, an idea, a pretty good like roadmap of like, I can do this much to make this much by this time. Yeah. I mean, it was an educated guess because the, the thing, the thing is, is that, um, Schmodown, did they pay you wages or was it commission based? Uh, it was a wage. Okay, yeah. You see, like that—that's the part that was that a lot of people are terrified of. Is right. I—I come from doing—I'll um, just say—I did network marketing before. 
it was a real weird <laughs> time in my life. <laughs> I'll say that much. <laughs> a real weird time. And um and but that taught me a lot about I always compare my time in network marketing to um uh, and I said it before I left because it was a real life warping experience that I was really dedicated to for like a couple of years. And um, I, I would say that it was, it was kind of like uh, Bruce Wayne with a league of shadows and Batman begins right. of, of I, 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 there's a, there was a lot of not so good things about network marketing um, that I'm sure like John Oliver did a special on it. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, that's true. Um, but there was a lot of things I learned about mindset, like there's like the beginning parts, like, like Bruce Wayne in the beginning there, like, Oh, there's actually a lot of great things. The league of shadows wants to do. And then it gets to a point where never mind, these philosophies are becoming thwarted and I'm not, and this is actually bad. And so for me, I was able to take the good of that, leave that behind. And I applied and a lot of the mindset was there because, and one of the things I learned was, you know, Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living, but profits make you a fortune. So I was okay with embracing doing commission. And that's the scary part for most people is most people are programmed to live by wages or hourly pay. And I really wanted to learn to get away from that because I feel like there's such a limited ceiling to it. And so that was the scary part was like, I'm going off of the gamble that I can keep my videos monetized because in the reaction community, that's, that's going to be a very hard thing and to keep my videos monetized and to be able to go, I, I might be able to double this if I just do double the videos. And now I'm trying to transition the channel to doing less videos, but make a similar amount of money because I'm hiring more people now and, and more on camera talent as well. And uh, right. I like to think I actually pay people. I think people would say like, I pay pretty well. Uh, um, I, li- I like to make them feel like they're being, paid well i've had i don't want to like yeah i'll, I'll, I'll end it there <laughs> yeah <laughs> people have said like, I, I i pay pretty well per hour no yeah, well uh, yeah we'll take your word for it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah so uh, when you were again like you said getting started learning how to kind of like maintain the channel uh, for yourself you mentioned uh learning recording editing and so on uh was there a distinct learning curve in terms of the tech and the, the going into it to just make the channel you know just get started wow these are so fascinating to journey back. Um, what a reflective time. It's making me appreciative of where I'm at now. <laughs> I like this podcast, Eric. I'll be here every week. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, there was. Um, in the beginning, uh, J- uh, I would shadow because John had a better understanding at the time when we were trying to do it together. Um, at the time, he he had a better understanding of how to edit because he, he was in film school and shit. And he had experimented a lot on his own with making stuff together. So I would study like the basics. Like I was like, I, I've always, I've, I, w- one thing I had always been taught too was, you know, really master fundamentals. So I was like, I need to learn timing on jump cuts. I need to learn about jump cut. Like that was the main thing to me was I just want to understand, you know, a good jump cut and, and timing of that. Right. And, and then from there I, I, I learned that and then how to, you know, crop and stuff. It was, I was just <laughs> iMovie for most of the years. It was just iMovie and, and uh, it, it was a learning curve, but, You know, I I always tell people that when they're starting up a channel, that's when it's the most fun because there's less risk involved. You know, a lot of people will, a lot of people are very, who don't start up, uh, they get so particular about what to do. And I, and I say it's a, it's a playground in the beginning and that's how you got to kind of treat it. Like I did this for almost two years, first year, there was like one whole year was, it was just pretty much just me and for making no money, (laughs) like nothing at all. And, and you, that is the playground time of learning how to do stuff and and going, I wonder how I can do this, like, or how does someone do that? And then you have Google at the tip of your fingers, or you just kind of click around and figure shit out. Cause I think when you first look at an editing system, if you're not familiar and you probably, I don't know if you would have, I don't know if you were just some like freaky genius, Eric, uh, but for me, (laughs) it's, it's incredibly daunting when you first look at it. And right. even and when I want to like graduate to a better editing program, I look at it and it's like, I don't know anything. I just right away, it's, my mind just goes, I don't know anything. This is, this is too hard. It's too complicated. And yeah, I mean, it's just one step at a time. And, and you, do, you do kind of just learn a couple of things. You kind of learn where some things are located to where you can then experiment and, and drop shit in. And at first, in the beginning, the editing was easier. But then when I was like, I want to make some sketch, I, I would... Like I did a couple of early sketches back in the day and, and that to me was, 
I would intentionally shoot some stuff just to see how can I learn how to edit this. Like I, there's one video uh, that we did called the the Raid Three, <laughs> and there was a fight scene in there that people really liked. And learning how to edit a fight scene was I've never done that before. Um, but it's once you learn the basics, you realize everything else from there is pretty simple. You know, uh, like yeah. it's not simple, but you can figure it out once you once you get down the basics of where shit's located in an editing system. And I think a lot of yeah. people get too terrified of that when it's like, no, no, just learn like where the crop is and learn where the volume part is, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. learn where the simple stuff is, keep doing that repetitively. And then when you want to go, how do I do this? Then you figure it out. And, yeah. and, you know, in the beginning though, especially with the reactions, I'm sure in those like Maleficent videos, I'm, I was shooting those off of my laptop, you know, that was, that was not like good quality. It was not yeah. good quality shit. And then eventually you graduate as you start making getting more followers or making more money, then you graduate and you start up upgrading your quality and you upgrade your equipment and stuff. And I, and I think subscribers tend to appreciate that. Like we film with these now too, for better audio and before, mm-hmm. for, for many years, <laughs> for most of the time we've been doing this, the audio has been God awful. Uh, but in the, <laughs> but it wasn't until like a million subscribers who started using these. So yeah, I mean, I, I think you can, um, I think you just got to learn to fail your way through stuff and, and embrace like making mistakes. Uh, that, that was, that's just been my, it happens all the time. Like today we, day of filming this uploaded two videos that are like two of the lowest performing videos of the month so far. And this took a lot of work and it's a bummer. Uh, but you know, you just kind of, you get, you get a little affected by it at first, but then you kind of shake it off and go, all right, well, what's next? So, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's great. That's a great philosophy. Um, you know, cause you said like you're learning the fundamentals, learning the basics of how to edit is like just the stepping stone to doing greater things. It's kind of like, cause I know you, you took martial arts, as you said, and it's just kind of the same concept. It's like you learn the basics, the forms, the fundamentals, and then that is like what gives you the foundation to expand and like do kind of you know more tricky things with it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think anyone yeah. in, in sports would always talk about that. It's always about fundamentals. Everything's about right. fundamentals. And a lot of people try to just hop to the next thing. You know, some people want right. like the fanciest camera in the fan without knowing how any of it works. <laughs> and like <laughs> just just get, start with the basics first and experiment from there. I, I meet people all the time who are like, I want to start my podcast. I want to start my channel. And I, I, I think nine out of 10 people will not get around to it because they, they get in the way of feel they, they over, of feeling like they got to like over prepare a setup or something. I'm, bullshit. I'm definitely one of those people. I'm definitely one of those people who, when I start something, I got, I think of all the avenues of like, you know, just thinking what, what if I run to this thing later, I need this tool for that thing. And like, you're right. It's uh, my, my, one of my favorite, uh quotes you know philosophies is don't get it right get it written just nice, like do that. it yeah just do it you'll figure out along the way you can adjust you can fine-tune it perfect it later but you just gotta start doing it yeah no that's that uh, that is i th- a lot of people don't a lot of people take that for uh, it's like a board game to me i am terrible when you're explaining what the rules are to me, <laughs> I, I yeah. can't, I, I will not, I'll zone out and I eventually will be like, I don't know what you're telling me anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so a lot of times I go, let me just play one round and mm-hmm. then, you know, let me ask questions along the way. Then I play like one round and then eventually, you know, you, you, as you start to play, okay, okay, I get this game now. I get the game now. But if, if you're just, but yeah, that that to me is kind of like how I run my whole life. Is just go. How do I do this? You know, I think. Yeah. I think the three uh, the three questions I heard to, to ask yourself in a situation is what can I do, who can I talk to, and what can I what can I re- what can I read or research or look up on the internet? Kind of basically. So a lot of times I go like, can I do it? If I don't know, let me ask this person. If they don't know, what can I research? And so there's always an answer, you know. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is just start doing it instead of waiting for the write up, waiting for the, a lot of people wait for the feeling <laughs> where I'm like, no, you just gotta go do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you mentioned John being, uh, you know, a big help to you getting started and sort of, yeah, like, uh, le- helping you learn the, the ins and outs of the editing stuff. Um, I want to know, like, what is your history with John? Like, how long have you guys been friends and uh, what was the. Uh, the process like you know sort of getting him involved for the channel um was it something that you envisioned with him immediately or was it something that you kind of like thought of like you know after things were rolling already 
Yeah, I wanted it to be him and I. Uh, that was the John and I have very different kinds of. Um, even though we grew up go in the same school together, essentially our upbringings and our whole life are, are, are drastically different, <laughs> and and who we formed into people are is very different. Like I've I've had to definitely survive, you know, a lot of times in my life, and um, you know, I don't want to speak too much to he's not here in the room so i don't want to like speak too much for him in a lot of ways he's never really been in that a position as an adult where he's like had to survive like he has a he's, he's always had a safety net when it comes to where he can stay or where he can live and whatever and, and for me i have and i think that does form two different kinds of mindsets so for me you know like i'm i'm always the one like i'm willing to just sacrifice all the sleep and you know i got ridiculed a lot at this, at the age of like, I'm going to do this YouTube thing and I'm not going to go to college, <laughs> you know, and, right. or he was doing the more traditional path and I went the very anti-traditional path. And a lot of people were really upset with me on that. So for him, it was just kind of like a, a thing he could do on the side with me. But for me, I was like, no, this is a real thing. This is a real thing. I'm going to launch is a real thing, a real business for me. So I, I've known John since I've technically known since first grade but I didn't really become friends with him until third grade <laughs> and <laughs> when we sat across from each other and we had always had, um, you know, like we'd always like love talking about movies and, and ever since we were like little kids, like little, little kids talking about movies was our jam. Like his dad, his parents, mainly his dad was in the film business and, and my dad was obsessed with movies and stuff. So uh, we were, we were always talking about films and we, and we had a similar kind of sense of humor always. It's like, you know, I want to change this channel up. It's actually surprisingly, it was, I found it a little bit hard. There's a lot of people you can talk about movies with. There's not a lot of people you can really click with on camera, though, which I thought was mm -hmm. a little interesting. It's like, oh, yeah. there's some people I can talk with on movies, but when you bring them on camera, it's not the same thing. And at the time, I didn't really know that many. So I was, I hit, John was working at Blumhouse, but his department was about to shut down. So I hit him up and I said, like, hey, do you want to give this another shot with just being here? Um, and, and like, just working full time here, uh, with me here. And so, yeah, that's how he came back into the, into the fold to be a full time person. Cause before he was just looked at as kind of like a guest and people would be like, why doesn't John have his own channel? And now, now he's here. And so to, for him and I working together, I mean, he, he is like, out of anyone I, I, I do anything on camera with, I mean, I think it's obvious that we have, I have the most natural kind of back and forth in chemistry. We read off each other very well. But I've always wanted him around uh, because, yeah, there's there he does provide something that is just uh, irreplaceable in, in, in my eyes. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's that's great, man. Really uh, long -winded. I'm not giving you anything uh, thorough. Everything is just rambling because no, it's, it's, my mind is. I love it. My mind is darting between the past the and, outs, and the present. The, the roller coaster, everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, it's going like well, I'm going way back to now. I'm trying to like connect the dots. Myself. That's what we got to know. We got to know. Like, yeah, when you were when you were kids in first grade, your first grade teacher, all that stuff. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you whatever. Man. I'm just, I know I'm all over the place here. <laughs> No problem at all. Uh, but you mentioned like, yeah, reaching the 500,000 mark and, you know, shifting your perspective on the channel, stuff like that. Was there a milestone early on that you kind of felt like I've sort of hit something here? Like, I feel comfortable that we're getting some sort of traction with this. Yes. Um, in terms of subscribers, I would weirdly say it was 30,000 subscribers. There was something about 30,000. I think it was like, I mean, 10,000 was like, whoa, shit, I'm doing it. Um, 30,000 was cool. Like, I, 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 that, I was around the time when I really started bringing on guests and mm -hmm. like and journey way up there. And that was the first time I held a party, um, like with a little <laughs> bit of people, like, oh, I want to celebrate 30,000 subscribers, you know? And um, there was like seven of us. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, there was a person, I don't know if I should say their name, they worked with a really huge YouTuber one of the biggest YouTubers of all time. And they had gotten hired by Legendary to, this was when it was brand new for studios to start, you know, you know how like every studio now has, like, they have their influencer marketing department team where they send right. their influencers out on shit. This is how I learned what the word influencer was when I signed a contract <laughs> and I didn't know what an influencer was when they said influencer signature. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> what, is, what is an influencer? <laughs> um <laughs> So it was, it was a very old video you can find in mine where I went to the 300 Rise of an Empire movie premiere, 
Mm-hmm. And I didn't know this. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't want, she didn't want to put the pressure on me um, about it. But this was essentially an audition, not, not for me, but an audition for, for legendary pictures to open up the door to working with other YouTubers. And my video would be the reference point for it. I didn't know any of this until after oh, man. the video <laughs> went over well with legendary. I didn't know any yeah. of this. Um, so yeah, like yeah, you really you really could have screwed things up. I there, really could have, like yeah, <laughs> they started working with like some big YouTube, and I had no idea that she didn't want to put the pressure on me because I was only I was I was like thirty thousand subscribers, <laughs> you know, I wasn't like yeah. I wasn't a big deal by any stretch, and so the the whole the whole point of the video was just like invite this guy to the premiere, let him let him really vlog it, and let him really make a whole video about it. And while the video didn't generate huge numbers, it was the content of the video and the response and the legendary, whoever the people, I don't know who the hell they were, um, but whoever was in charge of giving the green light to go, let's open up that door now to, to get <laughs> like actual big YouTubers. Uh, it started <laughs> with that. And to me, to, to, I was, I was just, I was flattered. They took a chance on me. The funny part was they, they had never invited me back for anything. <laughs> <laughs> which was like weird to me when I'm like, well, you told me that this was this was the thing that started it and this would open up the door because I, I eventually got invited to one event that was for Godzilla. They asked me to do like this one cute right. little video for them. And then when I went there, the, uh, the lady who had hired me for that, um, well, they didn't hired, I guess, but the lady who, yeah, who, who, who hired me for that, she she told me like, because I went to the YouTube space and it was all this like legendary stuff and all these YouTubers. I was like, what is this? And she's like, well, you started all this. And she told, and then she told me what it was all about. And so, <laughs> yeah, that was like to me, that, that was a pivotal point. Um, I don't sure. really, t- so I was like, why didn't you ever invite me back? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess similarly though, uh, uh, you know, with, I mean, the, with the YouTube space being, you know, a part of it at that point, was there a, a, any, you know, time when you felt like I've uh, kind of made it with like the with your peers with the people that you had kind of like you've been seeing in the youtube space as well like you started to start sort of like be one of the names that would be tossed around with them in terms of like the channels that people would go do to gravitate towards no uh that's that still hasn't quite registered with me <laughs> um <laughs> to to this day and i i never uh, I, I don't even really mean it in a sense of um, I'm trying to think of like, I, like I remember I went on, okay, Schmo down, right? Uh, I remember I went on Schmo's no, um, their, their show. And that was really nerve wracking for me. <laughs> that was extremely <laughs> nerve wracking. I did movie fights, screen junkies, movie fights. I did terrible on it. Wasn't invited back. I was shunned. <laughs> I was terrible <laughs> on it. Um, and even to this day, you know, like I, I can meet people who have less of of, of, of a subscriber count, you know. Um, I think what has really changed me, though, is you, you see, though, that if someone truly has an ego – it's the most off-putting thing in the world because mm-hmm. everyone is really trying a big part of what our movie talk side of the internet does is we a big part of it is especially if you're just like a commentator mainly is to make it look like that it doesn't take a lot of work <laughs> like that's it's a big mm-hmm. part of the deceit is to make it look like we're just we we just you know a lot of people might just be like all oh, all you do is just watch a movie and 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 you got the easiest job in the world and yeah, and like other people definitely with harder jobs. Um, but it, it's not to say like a lot of days I'm, I'm, I am plugging away for like 12 to 15 hours. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of us do work a lot and, and do work hard and put a lot of thought into it. And you, uh, you, if you meet someone with a real ego, I'm like, I don't, I don't even care to be around this person at all, no matter how popular they are. You know, one of, right. one of the nicest people I've ever met what is a guy named uh james from dead meat james james agenies from dead meat james mm-hmm. and i met him in mexico for an event for the nun the guy had gained like a million subscribers in a year and it was because like he he only and he did this in the year of adpocalypse and everything and he right. he wasn't aware of any of that shit 
because he just focused on his own content, his, his own work. Now he's like a superstar. <laughs> he's got like 7 million yeah. subs and he knows yeah. all these like big time directors in the Scream movie. Like he, he's huge. Um, it, but to me, I've never had a, even with him, you know, like I, I can still feel daunted by it. And there's, I still have a moment where, you know, like I could be around Christian Harloff and despite, you know, this channel, you know, technically having bigger numbers, I could still be around him and be like, that's Christian Harloff, <laughs> you know, like my mind will still go there. Like that's Christian Harloff. And I, and I think the, the other part, even, even like meeting like Eric Voss from new rock stars and hanging out with him is you realize that everyone is just, if before, when you get to know everyone, unless they have a true, like, man, they they behave like a dick in real life. And I haven't met a lot of them, but unless you get to, to, to meet, when you get to really meet people, you, you do see everyone's just a, a human being. And if they right. don't behave that way, then uh, I'm not even I, my my days of trying to like get your approval are, are far behind me <laughs> of, <laughs> of that. But no, I've, I've never really quite felt like I I be, I think I think the the reason why I'm dancing around this answer now I just realize in my own psyche of what's going on with me is because at the time when this channel started to really blow up, I was a part of the group. You know, there was like Tyro Magnus and Akasan and myself. There wasn't, a, there, like I said, there wasn't a whole bunch of us. And I was like a bunch of people who do, you know, uh, like they really do a lot of show reactions and movie reactions and stuff. Um, but at the time, I was lumped into that category with these these folks uh, where reaction channels were being called the cancer of YouTube. You know, like there was so much hate. Uh, there was these other channels that were just like dedicated to taking down reaction channels. And, and viewed it as like the scum of YouTube. And mm -hmm. that there was a, a bit of a, I still feel it in my heart. Like when I talk about it, like there, it was a bit of a traumatizing, it, it forced me to make the channel better. Like I really wanted to up the editing and up the quality. I really wanted to show like, no, there's actually like some real fucking effort that goes into this, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that, so it made the channel better even though I thought the channel was already fine as it is, <laughs> but it, it made it better. Uh, but that, that part of me has never left. So every, everywhere I go, I, I still feel like, I wonder if this person really hates what I do or hates me just for the category I often belong to, you know? Um, it, I think it's different when you look at like the movie and show reaction sides mm -hmm. of, of things. Like a blind wave, for example, or, or, or Elon Snow, you know, where it's like mainly that because it's very evident that, that takes a lot of work to put one of those videos together, like a show versus putting a trailer reaction together. It's right. one is much less time consuming to put together, <laughs> and yeah. and I think with like the when it, when, when all, all we mainly did were were like trailer reactions and stuff. Uh, even though I put a lot of work into like the commentary and really wanting that to shine and show that there is thought going into this. Like I would have, if it was another YouTuber's video, I, I'd have other YouTubers who would hit me up being like, I loved, I, I remember there was, it was one of those, like, I won't say who, who it is, um, but it was one of those like chant horror channels that would do like, you know, like three scary things or whatever like that. And put a lot of thought into their script. And I did a reaction to their video and at the time, one of the lessons I learned is, like, you know, now I, I definitely like try to get some type of permission. But back then, I wasn't really on top of getting permission a lot of the time. Right. And um, I didn't ask for permission to cover his video. And he hated reaction videos. <laughs> and he uh, is huge. He's a huge channel. And he's and he 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 emailed me and he said to me that I love he's like. Hey, you didn't ask permission to do my video, but I'm going to let you keep it up because I actually really liked your commentary on the video. So you can keep it up just next time. Ask me for permission. Um, and to me, that stood out to me. But even at that time of getting like an email like that and sometimes getting messages like that from other, other big YouTubers, way bigger than myself, I, I was still part of that camp where we are the cancer of YouTube, <laughs> you know, like, and that has never left me. I, I still to this day. I, I a thought will go off in my head if I meet someone I admire. Like they, like I, I love Red Letter Media. I loathe the thought of actually meeting them though, because even <laughs> though I watch their videos all the time, <laughs> I, I still go. They probably hate 
what I do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, I've never felt like on equal grounds uh, due to that. Yeah, that's a that's a great, that's a great way to articulate it. Like really, um, just that thought process. Because you're right. Because you're right. Like for like a long time. Uh, even up until I'd say like just a few several years ago, uh, you know, yet yeah, the reaction space was kind of viewed as like low effort type content. Um, I think the culture around it has shifted now. I, I think people there's a large following for it, obviously, and people do see the effort that's put into it by lots of different channels. Um, but for you yourself, like you started so early in this space, like you said, you started in 2012. It's been like a decade now. Um, in terms of like, I guess the culture, but also like the, the, the algorithm and like this platform itself, like what's like the biggest changes you've seen, like in terms of like, just like the, the space that you've worked in reaction or otherwise. Uh, the biggest change, gosh, the thing is YouTube is, is always changing. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember the, I, I once made like my biggest, I had like made one of my biggest checks ever. And then it was instantly followed by my income went down by like 70% the very next month. And I had done nothing different. And the views were the same. Because before YouTube used to favor, like it didn't matter, you know, like there wasn't, it wasn't as much rules and intricacies to your algorithm. There wasn't, it was plain and simple, you know. Right. I, I could do like six videos a day and get like 70,000 views all the time and, or 70 to 100K views. And it could be like four to five minutes long. And then now it's now it's even this year alone is weird for people because it's like YouTube is funneling money to shorts. Mm. And but then they're like, but we want you to do long videos too. Like, what what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> shorts don't really pay well, but they get the most views and you get subscribers, but they don't really convert to your normal videos that you do. The the biggest change. <laughs> I think in the movie space, I think the vitriol has, has um, kind of grown a in certain camps, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to like the draw. I make fun of it a lot, but like the people that scream woke culture and virtue signaling at every given moment, it's kind of nonstop berating. Um, I don't know if that's really changed, though, because drama seems to have always really taken off. I think there's more of a fear in the zeitgeist for for YouTubers. That's what I've noticed. There's a big fear of will my channel survive or can I monetize my shit? <laughs> like yeah. that, that is a constant prevalent thing. I see echoed from a lot of YouTubers all the time. Whereas before that really wasn't a concern, you know, back then I could say the most vulgar stuff, the most vulgar, raunchy, racy stuff. Um, I could do <laughs> the most, like there's <laughs> some videos where I did some extreme stuff that was not age restricted. Yeah. Um, you know, flat out just pubes on camera and everything, you know, like there was channels like Racka Racka and, and there was the guy who would do like vomit cake and stuff like you would, you could do the most disgusting things and, and it could be the most edgy kind of humor. And I do think that, and I, I don't use this word lightly because I, I think the word is often, um, abused. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's true. I think the censorship on YouTube is really hardcore now. <laughs> like you, yeah. you get the, the amount of like muting and blurring and the amount of big times I see big YouTubers complain about still getting age restrictions or yellow dollar bill signs after you put in like so much, like my everything everywhere all at once video is, is one of my favorite videos I've ever done. And that took so much time to put together. That took so yeah. much time. And it's I, I got age restricted. I contested it. It's got like 280,000 views and it still pains me <laughs> that like that <laughs> video and even like the movie producer, the head movie producer, like messaged me about that video. And I was so honored by that. And I, and I noticed this all the time with people. It's like a lot of times they'll get age restricted. Like my buddy, one of my closest friends in this space, uh, Paul from heavy spoilers, he'll do these videos and he'll just get an age restriction. And I'll watch the videos back. I'm like, I honestly have no idea what's in your video that could have gotten you age restricted. <laughs> like, I, I have no idea. So, the, yeah, I think the the censorship is the is the most alarming part about YouTube. Is like, I'm constantly worried I'm just going to get age restricted. When back yeah. then, that was never a concern. That was never a problem. And and that has just and as much as YouTube tries to like 
put out something once in a while that says, you know, I've taken some measures that I think help out uh, with avoiding, mm -hmm. like I'm still surprised cocaine bear is not age restricted on my channel, but <laughs> I, I've tried. But yeah, that, that is the hardest part is there, there is a, you can still say whatever you want. You just got to sacrifice the monetization. Basically you can still do whatever you want. You just got to sacrifice the monetization. So the freedom yeah, of speech yeah. still exists. It's just, if you want to actually keep your shit monetized, uh, <laughs> that does not, that, that makes it much, much harder now. Um, uh, much right. harder. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, just with the way last year they implemented the new rule, of, like not cursing within the first 15, 30 seconds that they had to roll back because it was affecting too many people negatively. Um, yeah, that was that was such a big thing, and you're right. Uh, that's a, definitely a, a strong aspect of what has changed on the platform and how it affects like everyone in the space. Uh, but you also mentioned the vitriol of just like working in the space and with like I, I think. Yeah, but it's not black and fellow white. Fellow creators, like there, yeah, there's, yeah, it's not black and it's not black and white. There, there, there are some people who are very. I, I just, I, I don't know if it's just, I just caught on to it uh, late. That's that, that's how I guess I'm not uh, I'm not fully confident in saying that because I I don't know if I just caught it late of of right. what it is like because you know I, I don't know if it started with the last Jedi or whatever <laughs> but it's just <laughs> it just seems like it progressively has gotten worse where channels are just they yeah. like they have like it's so dedicated yeah. to it and I've seen I've seen some you know other YouTubers who've really adopted that kind of language too you know to really yeah. write off of right off of that um yeah well, for, for you though i guess like dealing dealing with that to, to maintain like your own you know self-image of like you know not necessarily falling into that pit um and also dealing with like commenters who kind of perpetuate that sort of you know circular attitude um do you have any like specific philosophy or like a uh, tactics that you kind of use in your daily life to sort of maintain your <laughs> mental stability uh, to make sure that you're not again falling into that sort of uh attitude I think it's okay to like learn what other people are saying. Like, I don't mind watching um, what other people are saying because it often leads for material that I find funny <laughs> to <laughs> to then make fun of or, or makes makes satire of, and then it prepares you for kind of the conversation of it. Right. I mean, not reading comments is always. I could, I, I, ever, I think every YouTuber knows the pitfalls of when you go too deep into a comment dive, especially when you're an opinion based channel. Um, yeah that that's that's the biggest part of it but i i don't really get affected by it too much outside i think when it comes to the the channel itself normally what i what i have found what i like to do if i'm covering a drama topic is sure i'll make the thumbnail um i won't make the thumbnail funny i'll make it look like it's a drama like we're gonna be dramatic <laughs> but <laughs> When we do the actual, I think like anytime we've talked about even like Ezra Miller, even this, this Jonathan Majors videos or whatever, uh, I, I think what people have often echoed in our comments is, uh, or for covering some type of like dramatic movie news, you know, rumor, I think what people have often echoed in our comments is like, we still make it pretty funny. Uh, you know, like we, like our thumbnail might not look like we're going to be, but we actually make it like pretty funny. Like we really care to, so the day we're just talking about. Unless like something truly like if it's like a sexual assault story or something, like, I'm not gonna make this funny. Right. Um, but the uh, but a lot of times, it, it, yeah, there's there's ways to find humor in it. And I, I take inspiration from people like Double Toasted and uh, Mister Sunday Movies for how they can handle like dramatic movie news. Like there's there's that space that knows how to talk about it mm -hmm. without giving into just screaming the same echo chamber thoughts that like it's like these like common keywords with no yeah. with a lot of the time with no uh with with no elaboration <laughs> on why you're saying why you're saying like the same like it's it, it's so easy it, it's just so easy to just go like it's because of their identity politics the virtue signaling the woke culture side of it they're pushing agendas and a lot of the time it's not really even followed by Give me some real specifics of like break yeah. down why you're saying that about this yeah. subject right here. Um, yeah. Other than just labeling the same few words on it. And, uh, but yeah, but then there's people like Double Toasted and, and, and Weekly Planet who, who really know how to talk about like, if they talk about one of these movie news stories, they still find a way to, to find the humor in it. 
And, and to me, I take, I take a lot of inspiration from that. And I don't know how to do that like a solo in a video. Like I would need like at least John with me to, to do that in a video. So to right. me, that's kind of like my outlet when it comes to, to handling these kind of conversations <laughs> around them. <laughs> Right. Um, do you, uh, I mean, do, with the work itself, like, you know, with, uh, at this point you're doing reactions, uh, reviews, uh, sketches, like interviews, stuff like that. Is there any, uh, specific part of the channel that you're doing now that you find like a little more creatively fulfilling than the others? Like when you look, you look forward to more, you're like, I get to do this today. You know, is there something, some uh, specific aspect that you'd like, you like to, to partake in? Yeah, we don't really do the, we haven't done a sketch in a long time. Um, let's just take the wind out of me. Like the last one we did was, I think a Batman one or a Spider Man one, one of the two, and um, I did a, I did one for the first No Way Home trailer. That took me like fifty hours to put together. <laughs> so, and I was like, this is this is really hard. <laughs> and I did a Batman <laughs> one, and so yeah, we haven't done a sketch in a while, um, which is funny because I have a house now, and I and I'm like, this is the time to do sketches. <laughs> but I, but I've been. I've been getting back into. I've never lost sight of my actual main goal, so I've been getting back more into writing. So I, I off, a lot of my real like creativity to create and shit has gone into that. And you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to making a sketch, I'm asking other people to make more time, and I'm trying to allow, like especially John, I'm trying to allow him more time to do other things that he really wants to do. Um, right. so I haven't done a sketch in a while, but the the, the part that I I'm really enjoy. I am enjoying the movie reaction stuff a lot lately. Mm -hmm. There's I think, you know, like 2020 is 2020 or 2021. It was like, all we're doing is covering Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> all, we're, <laughs> all we're doing is covering Marvel. Like that was mainly what we're doing is we're just mainly covering like Marvel. And it's true. It was, you know, it was, it was like, I made it, I would make a joke about like three days without a Marvel video or something like that. Like one of those yeah. employees that without an accident, the board's, uh, but the but I think like the most ver the variety that we have found that works truly without relying purely on like you know big fandoms like Marvel or DC is is the movie reactions you know like I love that I can cover like Kung Fu Panda which that has a fandom <laughs> but you know mm -hmm. I, I love that I could cover Kung Fu Panda. I'm like, oh, this is an old ass movie and it's doing well, you know. <laughs> and um, and and there is a lot of I there is a lot of thought that goes into those movie reactions, you know. Of uh, even if even if we get like someone else to edit it, like the actual process of reviewing the edit we get gets very. It, it becomes like like I just did this for Evil Dead Rise. Like had it to come back, but I spent like an at least like an hour hour and a half like reviewing it of going like, no, this should be cut or this should be changed. And, and cause I'm really like, I want to keep people watching and, you know, and, and that, that one's the, the fun one of like, how long can I keep people watching this video for? And, right. you know, I know our, our sense of humor doesn't work for everyone. You know, sometimes people don't want us to make any jokes, but I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people who are going to be covering this. So the thing that'll make us a little bit different is, you know, the fact that we have a sense of humor <laughs> and that we're yeah. making jokes. It's like, no one else is probably going to make this joke. <laughs> so if we're going to make our jokes, where yeah. the opinion, someone, you might hear a very similar opinion from someone else. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah I, I think the one that, the one that does take a, a pretty good amount of thought is, is, is like the movie and show reactions for sure. Like for that stuff, like I enjoy doing that more than like trailer reactions and short video right. reactions because yeah. those are, um, as, as you know, from putting them together, many, you've put many together yourself. Like those, those are time consuming, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you were, you're a very reliable editor. A lot of people don't know that about Eric is that he's a very reliable. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think I've ever really had, we've had our issues where it's been like, fuck keeps getting blocked. Um, but more often than not, I've never really been like, Dude, why'd you leave this out? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you have a pretty good sense of timing on that. Thank you. Um, I want to ask, like, so with uh, yeah, the movie stuff and everything going on, like uh, you mentioned earlier, that you uh, wanted to break into like other things, you know, for the channel, for like movie reviews and uh, beyond for writing and doing your own personal content. Like, is there still an aspiration you have to? write or direct like anything original for yourself oh dude yeah no that has not left there's so much i do not talk about um publicly because i learned my lesson from when we decided to talk about something publicly and it didn't pan out <laughs> when i was like we thought it was going to and then i was like 
should definitely wait till you're at the finish line. <laughs> and uh, because, yeah, no, I, I don't, I'm, I'm never going to quit on that. I, I could see myself like <laughs> being 16. Like, I still, still got to sell it. Um, <laughs> and the, it's one that one deadline article, honestly. I, and like, I've, I've even had like, uh, I've, I've met Chris Duckman a couple of times and like seeing what he's doing and, and talking with him about, uh, like, I think it's so inspiring what he's doing. And, and, and like, yeah, I've told him there was something that funny enough, it happened right now. We're, we're doing this video the week, the, like a week ago when the writer strike started happening and yeah like i i just don't i don't want to put it out there like what what the progress is of something but yeah i worked on something new it took like a year to, to to work on it and then then we finally got it in the hands of a pretty big spot and then they started mm-hmm. pitching but the writer strike started happening yeah. happened so i was like okay no pit <laughs> no no studio meetings now <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah like there was that and and i'm and i'm working on something else right now that i i want to just i already know who i can probably get to actually direct it and and um i've already talked to them about it and they really love it so I was, and it's something that i think we can produce our, ourselves but it's like you talk about these things and it's well, i feel and realize like this, this even if we get the funding or start shooting. I'm like, this shit might not come out for like two to three years. You know, <laughs> like these things yeah. take a long time to come out. Right. Uh, so that's why I don't really like talking about it uh, as much putting it out there publicly, but in private. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, and that's the, that's the thing I find the hardest time doing is especially when I'm like, sometimes I'm working like 12 to 15 hour days is, is finding that time to write. So sometimes having like a deadline does help uh, mm-hmm. because it's like, doesn't matter. Don't sleep. Just get it done. Um, but I, my my main my main um my main joy is still definitely like writing you know that that is 100 yeah. percent my main joy of when i can sit down and create and i like bouncing off of other people for it and i find it kind of like it is like its own version of editing um yeah. where, where it becomes right, yeah. surgical uh, of going like what's working what's not working what can i change you know, I get the anxieties and stresses all the time of like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a piece of shit writer and then I figure it out. And then I'm like, oh my God, I know what I'm doing. This is going to be good. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have like one for a graphic novel idea that I, I, I do want to work on because I, I'm not, I don't see myself ever going to the, ch- like, I really don't see myself ever being the kind of guy who's like, I have this movie. I want to get produced. Here's my Kickstarter. I don't ever see myself really being that guy. However, right. we, we do so much about comic book stuff and I have a great graphic, I have a, co- a graphic novel idea that I think is really cool. And uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's one of my passion projects. And to me, I, I'm like, well, you know, if I like produced this graphic novel myself, like hire the artist and whatever, I wouldn't mind like promoting that and selling it on the channel. Like, I wouldn't mind doing that because it works with the audience, but I wouldn't ask someone to like fund my sh- my film <laughs> so <laughs> yeah like that I, I definitely still have a passion for that yeah well uh one of your graphic novel experts is uh our good mutual friend koi uh who's become a big part of the channel now um i want to ask like what was the uh, uh the, the the history there like i mean when did you first meet koi like what was that like an immediate sort of kinship that you guys uh hit off or what's something that kind of developed over time and uh how uh what was the process like getting him to just be more involved with the channel i remember there was like uh when 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 john was first when I, after that five hundred thousand subscriber thing i was telling you about when i uh, hit up john we were trying out forms of partnerships of like how we can make it work before it was just like I was like, is there a way we're partners or are you going to be like my, empl- or are you going to be my employee? You know, which one's it going to be? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I always treat him with a sense of a, still there's a sense of a partnership regardless. He had met Koi, like we would meet Koi at the Schmodown. Schmodown was where we met. We would all meet right. Koi. We all knew Koi. And like he had tried bringing him on, but he never had, Koi was never successfully able to come on. Um, and so that just like didn't pan out. And then it was like a year after that. Um, it was, there was a Schmodown thingy, a Schmodown Awards. And mm-hmm. um, this is when the quirky Mercs thing for Schmodown started. And, and Koi, uh, I didn't think anyone would select me because I was not good at the game. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think anyone would select me. And, and I, I talked with Koi quite a bit a few times, but we weren't like close friends by any stretch. 
Uh, but right. we had like our conversations and uh, he, I always really admired him and I was a fan of his work. I, I was like a genuine fan of his work. And, and, uh, and, and anytime I talked to him, we really got along really well. And then he had picked me to be part of the team and I was really honored and like how he, what he viewed me as too. He, was, he wanted me like, he's like, like the Deadpool, the Schmodown. And I, I was like, yeah. I, I really liked that he said that. I was really honored by that. And, um, you know, he took faith on me when I had zero faith in myself. And then, uh, you know, when we're prepping for Schmodown, it was re- really, it really is the Schmodown, you know, as, as one of my best experiences from Schmodown is getting to really know Koi and mm-hmm. we and then, you know, he, like there were matches I was like nervous as fuck for, even though I always came across like the guy who didn't give a shit. I really gave a shit a lot uh, for a couple of them. And, um, and I would talk with Koi for a long time beforehand. And then we just got to talking about other stuff. Like really just got in, right. like we would just, we would just be on the phone, <laughs> you know, a lot of times like Koi and I will, you know, like once a month, I'll just hit him up about something else. Next thing you know, we're talking on the phone for like an hour. Like usually he's working out or I'm working out. <laughs> and like, we're just talking on the phone for like an hour. Um, so we really, we really clicked and, and then, um, yeah, I was getting a sense of like what he wanted to do with goals and stuff. And I kept saying like, yeah, oh, man, we should, I should, I should bring you on. I should bring you on. And I was waiting for like the right thing to like, what do I bring Koi on for his first time for? And that's when it was, uh, Eternals was when I brought him on. And I, and, right. and like, if, especially if I have guests like him, my goal is going to be like, I really want them to be the star of this video. I want them to, mm-hmm. to be the one to shine. And you're going to have no problems with doing that with Koi. <laughs> Even if you don't <laughs> intend that with Koi, <laughs> he's going to somehow find a way <laughs> to become the yeah. star performer of the video. <laughs> he'll shine. He'll, he can shine. He'll talk. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll talk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, he's, He's, he's got, other than the fact that he seems to get like aggressively sick once a month, <laughs> he's got a really good work <laughs> ethic and, yeah. and, uh, he, he is on top of it and, 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 and it can be, we haven't done one of our coys cause I, he didn't have like a, an actual segment where people were like editing shit around him, you know? So like I came up with coys comic corner for him to do. And, and uh, a lot of the ideas of the, of those videos are like suggestions that I've pitched to him. It's just that they take a lot of work to put together. So we just haven't done them in a while. Right. Um, but you know it's it is really impressive when you you see it like especially he could show up here like off of two hours of sleep exhausted i feel like he's gonna not do a great job and then <laughs> uh i don't have that feeling anymore like he can show up tired as hell and i, I know he's gonna kill it and he could yeah. if he could do like a freaking like i'm gonna rank 50 movies right now and i didn't rewatch any of them and, and he could just like <laughs> fucking nail it like the way his brain works and his, the way he can connect with the camera and the, right. the, the use of vocabulary uh it's it's really really impressive what koi can do again it goes back to the the balance of like you know uh maintaining your own mental stability you know working in like either the smowdown or the internet you know to, to being on youtube uh just being a public face you know is like such a big thing to just navigate these days um because people don't see you they see like again like still a character a performance of someone who's on camera that they know and they think they could approach them a certain way yeah there's um, still, there's still and, always uh, a yeah. an element of presentation yeah exactly and then i think over the pandemic over the last you know few years um that kind of got exacerbated like a little bit because people like were so siloed you know in their you know home watching channels discovering new channels uh and so for you like what was that experience like you know going through the early years of the pandemic, I guess in terms of like your real life, you know, adjusting things to stay safe, but also just the channel, adjusting things for what the, what YouTube was doing, what the culture of the audience was doing. You know, there were people who would say, um, my channel's been blowing up since the pandemic started. That was not the case for us. It didn't, it didn't blow up, <laughs> uh, by, for <laughs> us by any stretch. Like, like the trajectory of the channel was nothing was happening. Then it blew up. Then an apocalypse happened, and and these restrictions, yellow dollar bill signs, and then it kind of stayed stagnant for a, a couple of years. It was like few a few years. I wouldn't say a couple. I say like a few years, like three years. It just was not really growing financially. I was always on edge for like several years. Again, I was on edge. Even like bringing John on board and stuff, like it was not not the definition of living comfortably. <laughs> um, right. It was, it was like the same amount of hours, not making much. You know, and I, and I'm really pushing here every day. And, uh, I, 
it was WandaVision pandemic time. That was pandemic time, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. It, it was around like Mandalorian season two that led into WandaVision when everything started to change for us again. Where it was mm-hmm. like, now we're having our biggest months we've ever had in the history of of, of doing this channel, and I think that was the most eye opening experience to me of because I, I like yeah we've covered Mandalorian you were editing Mandalorian for like mm-hmm. we cover Mandalorian you didn't want a vision for us <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> so uh we we're covering that and um but the that that was the first time I'd ever been on such a like like Mandalorian season two was something but WandaVision especially was such a unique case for me to be on, on on quite a journey like we had done like like you and i had together like done like game of thrones and uh, season eight but one the one of vision was just like collectively loved like what's happening next week kind of experience and the right. conversation just never stopped even with like so it's like you just wait for that next episode and the conversation never stopped and that to me was like oh this is that feeling of community I, that word i've always heard about on youtube but i never <laughs> i didn't really understand it with a fandom until like right now in this moment like oh this is the feeling <laughs> and yeah. uh to me if it wasn't for the pandemic we would have had that wandavision I, I don't think that wandavision experience would have I mean, like yeah wandavision still would have come out and shit would have happened but something about the pandemic of I, th- I think the focus on it was even more magnified because of the fact that we were all isolated still and this is right. what we had to experience as our marvel cinematic universe thing before marvel became like this divided subject now and uh <laughs> that that to me was the most eye-opening that that to me was was the real game changer uh was was wandavision and we've kind of like yeah i, I learned a lot from that experience that and covering spider-man no way that was the first time i ever learned about what it means to to to, to ride a wave or cover something cover a wave <laughs> if you're <Right>. genuinely <laughs> interested in it and uh <laughs> yeah that i've never i've never done that before and so yeah, that, but the pandemic itself was, I mean, that's when I got engaged and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's when I realized like, oh, I could, you know, we're here together all the time and I, I don't hate you at all. So <laughs> let's get married. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was, I, I didn't, I didn't mind. I personally, like my experience with the pandemic did not drive me insane whatsoever. Like there are people who yeah. really, to me, I, I had an issue where I felt like I needed to go out every single weekend. Like it was a real thing of mine where I felt like I had to go out every weekend or I wasn't, I needed some type of validation for it. And, uh, to me, it, it really showed like, no, I can enjoy my time being at home and I could even catch up on some other stuff. And even yeah. to, even to this day, like there, there's plenty of weekends now where I don't go out, um, where I don't feel like I, I need to go out. Uh, I, I can, I've, I've learned it, it, it was uh, to me, I, I learned a lot from the pandemic experience uh, of, yeah. of the ice of, of being having to stay at home. So, no, I mean, I, I'm the exact, exact same boat. <laughs> I uh, didn't have a terrible time. Uh, it was it was a terrible time, I think, in the uh, abstract. But like personally, uh, it was a transformative time in a good way for me. Thank God um, for COVID. Yeah, <laughs> that's how that's always it. Yeah. Uh, but for you, like now, uh, just coming out of the pandemic, you've hit million subscribers um congratulations on that it's a big milestone that's cool. um what, what was the feeling you know uh, uh hitting that mark you know was it a sense of like relief or was it like a newfound like plateau of like now i gotta do more like i have more pressure on me uh i knew it wouldn't really change <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish i had a like a more profound answer um <laughs> There, there's been so many people before a million subscribers who had less followers than myself. It really, I was talking with uh, Stephen uh, from Nikki and Stephen about yeah. this. Of like, subscribers don't really matter as much as people. I don't mean like subscribers, like your subscribers don't matter. I'm saying like your subscriber count when it comes to views, a lot of the time don't really matter. Like, there's two kinds of a lot of people don't notice about YouTube, but there's like essentially two kinds of channels. Ones where it's mainly your subscribers who watch. Like a dead meat James, like it's a lot of his followers, his actual followers who watch. He need, and, he, and he needs that for the kind of content that he has because his kind of content does not get recommended a lot due to the fact of, I mean, it does, but just because of the nature of the, of the videos. 
Um, right. But he really does re- like he has a great like, and I think three C Films uh, does movie news. He has a great subscriber return. At least that's what I predict off of uh, what the kind of views he gets in like the first hour of uploading all the time. Like there's a solid yeah. base, and then you got certain channels like ourselves who YouTube views is like you're a channel that relies on reach uh, of of you know like not many people from our notification bells or our subscription box are going to watch us uh, and. Right. So a lot, and so there are many channels that have less followers than us who do better uh, view count on their average view count than us. Likewise, I mean, I could say that about other some other channels that I know who have more followers than us, but we do better than. Yeah. Um. So to me, it, it's never really been. It's like hitting a million subscribers is like cool and all, but doesn't we're not doesn't mean we're gonna we still have to work to get the views we we want to get. Like I can still have a dud like clocks out at like 15,000 views you know yeah. it happened today <laughs> like I could have a <laughs> for Phil, like I could still have a video like that it doesn't really convert to like oh this means views are easy now you know um yeah. so no I mean it's like it's cool that there's been enough people willing to hit that button uh, <laughs> uh but I still haven't even gotten my gold plaque I haven't even chased them down for it <laughs> like yeah, I haven't I, I should set that up um yeah but that we're at one point we have one million one hundred thousand subscribers now and, and i still haven't like hit up uh, about youtube like oh yeah yo i need my gold plaque Be, like i was yeah. in the middle of moving uh at that that time like there was right. like boxes and boxes the day we hit a million and it was such a busy night and 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 then we went live and, and i'm grateful for it not not to like just not like i just want to throw shade at it but it doesn't it it doesn't it didn't change my mentality at all in terms of like look what I've accomplished look what I've done because I'm like nah I could still have a shit performing video literally <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> um, <laughs> if I do not play my cards right with my thumbnail my subject my metadata in the description box like I still gotta right. like do a good I still gotta like put effort um, I, I can't just upload anything so. Yeah, no, it it hasn't really ch- it it. I don't think it's changed anything uh, for right. me. I think if if one thing that it's, it's kind of helped out with is because, like, for we don't we don't really do. There are channels that I know that like do brand deals like every single video, and only because of the fact that I've especially especially because like you know I can't keep working like fucking twelve to fifteen hour days all the time. And I want to do a, I want to do a little bit less video. So like like if I could just put more quality into like one video a day instead of doing like two to three videos a day, then I'm I I think I feel like it's just better for the channel overall to have like you know you're gonna get a qualitative video no matter what. So I have been wanting to do more brand deals, and I think it I think it's might have helped with that because brands are like they have a million subscribers. <laughs> yeah doesn't mean anything but yeah we do <laughs> so go ahead uh advertise this like i'm i'm one of those people that if you give me an app to do a brand deal for a lot of people don't do this and i i credit myself as being the guy who will do this yeah. it's like if you give me an app that i gotta advertise i'm going to sit down and play this app for a long time i'm gonna i'm gonna play it for a while <laughs> even if you're gonna force me into a position where i have to only use your talking points i'm gonna find a way to interject my own talking point <laughs> because <laughs> I need people to know, like, I really did play this, and I'm not just yeah. trying to sell you on something that I have no familiarity with. Right. Um, but sometimes the the uh, Mr. Sunday movies has talked about this, like the shit they come back to you with for like notes. I'm just like, what you? Just... Yeah, no, it's it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. But uh, um, no, I need to pay people though. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of times a brand deal is like okay this covers that person's money for the month like that's what it that's what right. a lot of it comes down to is like it, this yeah. covers john this covers coy you know, a lot of it comes down to that this covers the people are hired to edit you know like it, it it a lot of times the brand deals do come down to that so it does help um right right um but now yeah post subscribers uh, everything uh is is there a new milestone in your mind that you're kind of aiming towards like subscriber count or not like anything else like you're just sort of hoping you can achieve, you know, within the year, five years, whatever. Yeah. I'd, I'd like, um, there's some other people here. I've, 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 I've sometimes tried to force people to do like force it on the audience a little too early of having them do individual videos 
you know and and the the thing is i want to i've been bringing on these other people and i know and i'm aware that like oh you got to like kind of transition them to having solo but like it was a long time before koi was doing solo shit here where it wasn't like this is weird um instead of just throwing that on to people so there's like other people i've been having come on the channel that i really do want them to have more solo videos uh and have those do well uh, as well you know yeah there's a lot a lot of times it's like i a lot of times it's like i i don't so someone i'm working with asked me like if you were to pay yourself per hour what would you pay yourself and i've never had that question and then through the conversation and doing metrics and math i was like oh i actually most of the time if i were to pay myself i would be lose I, I i lose money on a lot of the videos <laughs> because like i, I <laughs> yeah. essentially don't really pay myself like i have a, a account for real re a business account for real rejects and i just like pull what i need to when it comes to like i gotta pay like the mortgage i gotta pay this <laughs> i gotta you know i don't but when it comes to when it comes to a lot of these videos i don't really um a lot of times i'm just like br maybe breaking even on like for after paying talent and paying people to help put this together and that's not even factoring in if i'm in the video and and the work i put in post uh for for uh, editing or additional editing or thumbnail like all that stuff right. like i don't even factor any of that in for myself so there's a lot of the time it is like it's, it's not to say i don't make money like i do make money like i, I do <laughs> um but there's <laughs> there are a good amount of times where i'm like oh i didn't make like they made money but i didn't make any money <laughs> you know like <laughs> that, happen, that happens a little a lot, uh, more than i thought um but i do want to elevate more people to the point because it's like you know it, what dawned on me is like i i do, I do need to kind of run real rejects a little bit more like like a business and, and not in the sense of i never wanted to lose its heart and soul because i understand what the emotional experience is that people have with real rejects and i've always i have to maintain that integrity no matter what uh but there are qualities where i do want it to feel a little bit more like I don't uh, that I own a business and that I that I own a business that I don't own a job because right now it's like I kind of own a job <laughs> and I don't yeah, uh, but right. I want to be able to feel like I do own a business where it's like you know like there's a lot of micromanaging that I'm, I'm having a hard time dealing with and I mentioned on a live stream where I'm at this weird point where I thought hiring more people would mean less work for me yeah that's not what it is at all. I'm actually working more <laughs> now that I have more people. <laughs> and, yeah. There's a quality control that uh, comes into play. Yeah. And, and, and I think there's uh there's leadership skills I lack in like, it's funny. I'll tell you a little tidbit yeah. about Coy and Roxy Stryer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they did a reaction to the thing, uh, the movie, the thing. Mm -hmm. I think you appreciate this because you know, their, you know, their personalities. Cause, cause Koi's been like, I want to do things outside of comic book movies. I'm like, okay, fine. And and I'm like, okay, you know Roxy. Uh, sure, I'll pair you guys up. They did the thing. Oh man. Um, they did not shut up the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I make fun of them about it. <laughs> to, to the, like, it's I make fun of it to, to Roxy and I make fun of it to Koi. Yeah, like that. They just yeah. like, they just. I was like, wow. They know each other so well; they just can't stop talking the entire time. I, I mean, that, that's a, that's a big part of it. Like you know, uh, you, I trust Roxy, I trust Koi in their spaces. Like I know the professionals in like a lot of different ways. But like uh, doing reactions stuff like that, there is like a, a uh, level of skill it. and like etiquette, like to like understand like what goes into it for like you know for the viewership, you know, mainly. Yeah, because uh, I'm sure they had a good time, obviously, but for like the viewership to make it like a kind of product to give out to people. Like there's a lot of like ins and outs that people kind of don't anticipate, you know, if they haven't done it before. Uh, and yeah, like uh, I, I always tell this to Drew too. It's like, I, I know she would be like a fun person to react to, but she doesn't have the etiquette down, which, uh, which I tell her face. I was like, yeah, cause you can't, you know, you get, you can't look at your phone. You can't be eating, you know, while you're <laughs> just watching and you know, watching a movie, like you know, and you, you have to stay kind of on topic, you know, when you're watching something. Stay you can't just, like tail off into like a, yes, a, a tangent, topic. you know, for five minutes and miss five minutes in the movie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, stuff yeah, like that. It, it, you there, get, there is a yeah, you totally get there's it. There's a significant level of skill that goes into it. That's more than just sitting down and just watching it. Yeah, there's an awareness, you know, like I I think about like I, I I'm aware. Sometimes I I I see how the edit is going to be while I'm filming it. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. 
I can imagine, like, sometimes I'm like, I gotta be aware, like, oh, we need something to cut to. So I gotta at least express something that's going on in me right now. Like, we need something right. to cut to, or there's just gonna be silence. But yeah, they, they were, and I, I had to tell them, like, okay, like, I want you guys to be yourselves, but if, I'm not gonna pair you guys up for together for a walk. It's like, when they're not with each other, like, they're fucking amazing. <laughs> they, they don't, they, they have that etiquette down to a T <laughs> when they're together. Cause, cause they edited it. And I was like, why are they even talking about this for two minutes? <laughs> like, it's not about the movie yet. And then I spent like, I think I spent like four hours on just the re-edit. <laughs> just so that way. <laughs> and it's so funny. <laughs> it's funny to me now. And I would totally make fun about them publicly anytime they put it to their face. <laughs> so like, this is not some like, you know, I'm not spilling any tea on them or something like that. It's, right. it, it, was, it was an experience I'll never forget of yeah. wow how did you two just not stop talking the entire time <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah, I, I totally but yeah but you've, you've edited enough people to know that like yeah there there is a as you know some people get mad at us for making john and i especially for like oh you're making too many jokes but i'm like a lot of times like yeah if we do we just want to make it fun and, and, and have a commentary but you know we don't sacrifice the emotion and we're aware that like yeah we also yeah, I think it, commentary helps too because you need something to cut away to, and it makes an actual it, video. Then, <laughs> otherwise, you're yeah. just watching people watch something with like blankly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess I, I think the culture around it has shifted, so people understand the kind of ins and outs of like how these things are produced. But like, there's still like a small percentage of people who are like, "You guys just are just talking the whole movie. Like, why don't you guys just like sit down and watch the movies? Like, we can do that. We can make like a half hour cut of like just sitting in silence if you yeah. want, <laughs> just watching scenes without saying anything. That I don't think that'd be as fun." <laughs> No, no. A big part of it is the understanding of the commentary experience, and like, the, like yeah. p- part of the review is is some of the stuff we're saying while we're reacting to it. You know, like expressing yeah. those thoughts and stuff. Uh, so let me just uh, wrap up final question here. Uh, so I want to ask, you know, again, you've made it this far with the channel, uh, and something I always tell everyone, big or small, is like this: this these places always have to be like an outlet for you. Like you have to sure. Have have fun doing it. it. Has to be something that you feel personally attached to, beyond just the counts, the business of it. Um, so I want to ask you: uh, Is there uh, a particularly rewarding part of the channel at this point for you, beyond just money and business and like the you know the number success of it? Is there something that you find the most rewarding aspect? The most rewarding aspect is still the fact that <laughs> you know, like. When I, like, I just did Evil. I, at the time of doing this, I gotta, I gotta like make a thumbnail for this. I, I just covered Evil Dead Rise. Um, I just right. shot a reaction to that, and it's so cool when it's especially when I, I really love something that I get to share that uh, experience. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it, it, it. At the end of the day, the most rewarding part is the actual making of the video itself. Like I enjoy that more than editing and all you know, that stuff <laughs> is when I, when I really do love something and, and I get to have that, like, I, I, I trust that if I am really in a space where I am genuinely enjoying something and genuinely having fun, that that energy is going to transfer to whoever's going to, well, most people, at least, you know, you still go like, who's this 2% that did not hit the like button on this, video? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I feel like most people will still feel that. You know, and, and having an understanding that even if it's something where I'm like crying about something, like if I'm getting really emotional and crying about something, that there is a connective experience that could happen there, you know, and, and I like having an understanding of the catharsis that we could bring or that or that connectivity that we could bring when it comes, because even if we're having fun or making jokes that like the jokes are, are not meant to undermine anything, they're meant to just be a part of the experience. So right. to me, it, it, the same rewarding experience, the same rewarding aspect has always been the same rewarding aspect like that I've yeah. had this entire time. Like that has never left of like, I'll give you an example of how I finally figured out how to get our, just our movie reviews to get views. You know, there are, mm-hmm. there are a lot of people now, especially like now a lot of people do them where it's like right of the theater reaction on their phone. Like there's so many of those now. Um, right. And to me, I was like, if we just did our movie because whenever we like would come home and then shoot a movie review, no one was watching them. Like for years, like like we tried. That's how I tried. Sorry, I got this channel didn't do anything. 
And then yeah. even when the channel was doing great, it, it just wouldn't do anything. It just did no numbers. It didn't do anything. <laughs> um, but, but then I was like, all right, why don't we do what we do, but just do it at the movie theater. <laughs> like just do it at the movie theater <laughs> and just call it like it just got out of reaction video. Right now there's a lot of, I'm not saying we're the one. I don't know who really started it. I do know that when I was really starting to do it, there wasn't a lot of people who were also doing it. And yeah. but we go all out. Like we bring mics, we bring cam. Like a lot of people just go on their phones. You know, like we we bring mics, we bring cameras. We really factor in like the experience uh, of it. And we risk. We've been kicked out a, a few times uh, for like you shouldn't be. You can't be filming. <laughs> like we've been kicked out a few times. Like we really we really give our effort to that. And. The reason, and then it hit me of why like this does better than even if we just went home 15 minutes later and shot it is because you're still getting the emotional experience from us because they're right out of the th- – like you're still communicating that as like reaction and review out of the theater. Even though you can't see us in the theater or reacting to it, this is still the emotional – there's still an emotional connectivity to it. And I think like the way to connect with anyone is you got to move them before you can move anyone with your opinions and shit, you got to move them first with your heart in some way. And, right. and to me, I'm like that, that ability to connect has, has been my favorite aspect of this. You know, like you came to our, our last two live live shows I did with Campy and Harloff. And I think it shows like, I really love being up there. <laughs> like I love, yeah. I love connecting Definitely. with people in that, in that regard and making people laugh and having a good time. Like, if if I can just have I, I know if I'm having fun, other people will have fun. Like more yeah. mo, most people, <laughs> I don't know if everyone, <laughs> but most people will have fun, and that that has always been the most rewarding part of it. And I love upping the game of like making better thumbnails and and things like that. Like I I, I love figuring how to always improve. And yeah, so yeah, like make, making making money's cool. Um, I'd rather make money than not make money. Of course, like who wouldn't? Um, uh, but you know, I'm, 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 like I said, at the top of this, that scarcity, like survivor mindset has never left. I am not a spender. <laughs> like I don't, I don't really, I still like the look that people think I'm a homeless guy. Like I still like that <laughs> look. So like that appeal that like I'm the guy in this PJs wherever he goes. Like I, I'm not a guy who looks who who likes to spend a lot of money um right. frivolously whatsoever uh you know sometimes i might treat myself to something but more often than not like i just kind of like hibernate money <laughs> um, yeah. and, and then i pay people and then i pay myself what i need to if like this is the bill but yeah i mean mm-hmm. to, to me it's it's weird it's it, it the most joyful part is like the fact that i still I would rather do this than work at a store. I'd rather do this than work for anyone. I'd, I'd rather, I, I, yeah. like, I, I'd rather, the fact that I get to be, I truly get to be my own boss. You know, sometimes yeah. I feel like my boss is my, like, subscribers who, or, or people who are commenting to cover something that I don't want to cover. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, I can still, I, I make that choice quite a lot now of like, you know what? I've seen enough of Oppenheimer. And Universal is going to give me a lot of crap for covering their trailer, and I'm going to have to fight them on a copyright claim. I'm just going to wait till this movie yeah. comes out. I'm going to skip this trailer. <laughs> so, like, I can <laughs> still be the guy. I can still choose that for myself. Or, hey, you know, like, I love Superman and Lois, and I know there's a f- quite a bit of you who are like still like oh, fucking cover this show, Greg. Uh, I love it, but I'm like, I just know it wouldn't do that well, and it's going to take yeah. a lot of time. Uh, and and the show's getting canceled right now too. It's not going to do that well. And as much as I love it, I can't do it. I, I can choose not to do it, you know, and, and not do it. <laughs> like, right. And I could also choose what I want to do. Uh, so the same thing, I guess the, part of what's been cool about talking to you about this is actually it's been a rewarding talk for me because I'm like, oh, shit, I did accomplish what I wanted to do when I first set out to the, do this, which was be my own boss and yeah. be able to be financially independent and be able to make a living essentially talking about movies. So I feel yeah. like that's why I love the movie reaction so much because I'm like, that is what I've always wanted to do here <laughs> is cover movies and share my experience about it. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, you made it. Yeah. You definitely, you definitely uh, accomplished that. 
Yeah, no, I think I've I've accomplished my main I've accomplished my main goal with it here, and, and now I want other people to I do want other people to really you know, a big part of like Koi has been like he deserves more rec. I really do believe Koi deserves more recognition. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and then like even even bringing on like I want my friend Tara Erickson to come on more, Sally, like my my friend Michael who I've been bringing on for Star Wars videos. I'm like he he's had this love for Star Wars, like he has other successful business ventures, but he's had this love for Star Wars forever like so passionate but he's never been able to do anything with it and now he gets to do something with it <laughs> you know <laughs> and so I, I think that's really cool when other people are afforded an opportunity who can come here um even like roxy who's like i've always thought was really funny and and chance for mm -hmm. her to like shine through here uh, when people have when I, I i do find it really rewarding when i'm like they're being loved by the audience yeah. Uh, that 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 does really genuinely make me happy when 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 the reception for them is so strong because sure. that's cool to afford people that opportunity uh to do stuff and you know like i'm I'm big on i can be pretty big on thanking people you know like we haven't actually worked together in, in quite a while at this point but like mm -hmm. even on our journey in the last hundred thousand i was like i, I still want to shout you out <laughs> um yeah <laughs> for where we've come you know so yeah yeah like i I, th I think I think a lot of times people feel like they I'm I'm very much aware like it doesn't matter that I own this business that I run it there's no way I could have done it alone <laughs> you know <laughs> um so yeah and I, and and I think it's important to give that credit out as well That's great. No, very very well said. Um yeah, uh that that's it. Uh I do want to do our final questionnaire uh inspired by the uh Inside the Arch Studio, uh, James Lipton questionnaire that he does, the Prowse questionnaire of uh, yeah, rounding out the show. Just quick shot uh, answers down the barrel. Uh, starting with, uh, what is your favorite TV show? Period. Breaking Bad. Okay. Good. Uh, what is your favorite film? Matrix. Nice. Uh, what stresses you out? Uh, low Just views. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what helps you relax? Whose line is it anyway? <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah. Great one. laughs> and working uh, out and working out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what media outside of film and television do you enjoy the most? Uh, can music count? Or... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Music and, and comics. Okay. Um, what media outside TV and film do you uh, enjoy the least? Oh, Oh my God! There's media outside of that that is not enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, not necessarily like you dislike. It's just like the one that you don't partake in maybe as much. Oh shit! <laughs> Do you have any? Ex nothing comes to mind uh, for me. Okay, well, that's, that's, I'll take that. Yeah, take the answer. <laughs> there's literally nothing that comes to mind. That I'm like, I would. I don't like uh, that. <laughs> uh, what is your guilty pleasure of anything? Food, TV, anything? Oh, oh my God. Um, I love Reese's peanut butter cups, zero sugar, and <laughs> the show I, love, uh, I love I love the show Love Is Blind. <laughs> it's an amazing, amazing reality show. I'm kind of unhealthily show. obsessed with Love Is Blind. <laughs> it, yeah, it a lot of people it, are. It, it I, takes I've seen. I, I, yeah. I don't. I don't like reality. Show. I really don't. I have zero interest. It's somehow, I stumbled into Love Is Blind. It's the only. Like to give you an idea, the last reality show I watched was American Idol. So, like season two with clay aiken you know so this yeah. is the first one and i I'm, and like i've spent too much time online being like what is this bitch been up to? <laughs> like, that, that, that's what i hear i have not seen it myself i hear everyone raving about it so it's, maybe i have to check it, is it out addicting. it is very addicting. it's a really <laughs> great concept genius it's a genius concept it's genius uh what film or show do you wish you could erase from your memory and react to for the first time on camera oh fantastic question Oh, that's a great one. Oh, like with a camera pointed at me. Oh man, I would say the okay. I got two. I I would say John Wick one, or um, there's a random pick here, and I don't know what. I, I think it's because this was I saw us at three in the morning, and I was very loud when a certain scene happened in this movie, and it's a it's a movie called Dragged Across Concrete. Have you heard of it? No, I've not. It's uh, Craig T. Zeller, the guy who did like Bone Tomahawk and 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 that sprawl and cell. It's it's like Vince Vaughn, Mel Gibson, and uh, 
Michael Jai White. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a very it's it's a weird crime film. But yeah, there was like one moment. It was like a three hour movie, and I I put it on at like t- midnight. So I was like, it's three hours. I'll divide this up. Next thing you know, it's like two thirty in the morning, and I'm almost done with this movie. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and yeah, there's a moment in it where I was like just by myself, and I was like, I can't believe that. Just like I was just, like freaking out. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that I think just because of that one moment alone. But yeah, John Wick one or that. Okay, great. Um, what advice would you give yourself specifically yourself? Uh, when you first started this channel, if you can go back in time, talk to yourself. Um, I would say l- learn to l- learn as quick as possible to be comfortable with being honest with yourself and with others, because that's what will make you unique. And that, re- that level, and that's what, that reliability will last longer than anything else. You know, I think learning to be more honest on, cause I, I, I was, I wasn't always as strongly honest as I am now on camera, but I think, you know, that I've learned a lot from watching other people because I've noticed that like, Oh, these people don't like a lot of things. So when they like something, I'm like, Oh, this must be good. Like it stands out to me, you know? And, and I trust their opinion more. Even if I don't agree with the thing they don't like, I trust that they're honest. Um, right. And I, and I think earning that trust is important. And a lot of people are, get afraid to go because 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 a general opinion about something is so easy to access now <laughs> you know yeah. whereas back then whereas like so it's easy to kind of placate you know to what most people are saying and or mm-hmm. be afraid to be really honest or kind of sugarcoat your your criticisms um but i and i and i think like now i just really be the more honest you are with yourself and with with others about it, especially when it comes to your opinion about something like don't give a shit um just yeah. be be you and uh don't try to don't try to seek validation from from people's lo- liking what you do <laughs> Damn. Yeah. and uh is there any different advice you would give to anyone else who would want to start doing this now today oh today um yeah i would uh, i would i would say that Don't ever try to be anyone else. Um, that I think it's really like it sounds like the most obvious advice, but people do it constantly. They they look and go, "What's this person doing? What's that?" Per-? Like you can learn from other people, but people, a lot of people copy too early on, and it's like don't just copy what the, what they do. Like right. like you can learn from them. And you can be inspired. Like I've referenced other YouTubers who have inspired me, and or like who's I've learned like. Of like when I talked about the drama news, like Mr. Sunday movies and double toast on how they handle it. And then I make my own version of it. But uh, I think because you, you, no one else, the more honest you are with yourself about your opinion or whatever, or even, or even, or, or even your sense of humor, no one else, there's no one else that can be you. That's what makes you unique. No one else can be you. So the more you can be comfortable being you, you will stand out plain like plain and simple that's as simple as it gets the more on the more you can be you the more you can stand out and the more you try to be someone else the more you get lost in the shadows great fantastic point to end it on uh greg thank you so much for joining me today it was a uh, uh, long uh, but <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful conversation truly truly um it was great to kind of pick your brain about this whole thing um where can anyone i guess find you online uh social media youtube otherwise anywhere at dat john humphrey on twitter <laughs> follow uh koi jandro on instagram <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i'm just that i'm either at the greg elbow or at real rejects one of the two i dropped the the recently it's been very controversial <laughs> <laughs> uh fantastic uh thank you so much for joining us uh everyone watching uh please make sure to share this if you're watching this on the newsletter uh please spread it out spread the word we appreciate it uh and we will see you on the next one Bye, guys. <laughs>